Welcome to our video set on optimizing your PC. In this video, we'll discuss setting up and using virtual memory. Now again, through the control panel and go to the system screen, and if you go to the advanced tab and take a look at the performance settings, and advanced. Obviously this area of the control panel does have some very advanced settings, so tread very carefully if you're going to make some changes. But what I'm going to talk you through is one particular feature of Windows that's very important, and that's virtual memory. Okay, what it says here is a paging file is an area of the hard disk that Windows uses as if it were RAM. Essentially, let's say you have a gigabyte of memory in your computer a gigabyte of RAM, and you have a whole bunch of programs open, and let's say you're using Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, you have Photoshop, Dreamweaver, and those are all pretty intensive software applications. So when you have a lot of software running, it may use over a gigabyte of memory. It may need more than that memory to have them all running at the same time. So what it does, it starts using part of the hard drive as if it were memory. So here I have a paging file, as it's called, of approximately 2 gigabytes. So if you add this 2 gigabytes to the, let's say, 1 gigabyte of RAM, it's as if my computer actually has 3 gigabytes of RAM. And what Windows does then, it has some of the programs I'm using in memory, and it moves some of them to the temporary paging file on my hard drive. Maybe another way of thinking about it is, RAM is the current workspace of your computer. That's what your computer uses to remember what you're doing right now. But if you have a lot of things going on at the same time, and it goes over the amount of memory you have available, then some of those tasks have to be temporarily pushed out of memory because there just isn't enough memory for all those tasks to happen at the same time. But you don't want to close them down entirely, so it stores them temporarily in virtual memory which is just a section of the hard drive that's used as storage, as if it were RAM. Obviously, a hard drive is a lot slower than RAM. RAM is the actual workspace of your computer, where a hard drive is accessed more slowly. That may be a somewhat complicated description, but an easy way to think about it is that virtual memory, also known as a paging file, allows you to do a lot more with your computer at the same time than the actual physical memory of your computer should allow. And the more virtual memory you have, and it's just a setting you can choose here, the more you can do at the same time. Obviously, the bigger the virtual memory, the bigger the paging file. And the paging file is just a section of your hard drive, which is just used as temporary storage. The bigger the paging file, the more obvious the effect on your hard drive, because obviously, the area of your hard drive is set aside specifically for this task, for temporary storage. So if you have a very large paging file and you have a huge quantity of software running at the same time, then Windows is going to be constantly swapping software from the hard drive to the memory and back again. And it can be quite a slow process. That's why it's often suggested that if you really want a fast computer, you need a really good processor, of course, such as a Pentium 4 or better, but you also need lots of RAM, especially if you're doing intensive things such as using Photoshop or doing very intensive calculations in Excel, for example. More RAM is good, rather than depending on temporary storage on your hard drive. But what I'm getting at here with this detailed description is that the more space here, the more you can do at the same time. But also, the more space gets used permanently from your hard drive as temporary storage but you do want a decent sized paging file, or otherwise you're going to be restricted in what you can do, and if the size of the paging file is zero, you're going to have serious problems, and you're probably going to get multiple warnings from Windows. So a rule of thumb, well, it really depends on what you want to do. The memory in this computer I'm doing this demonstration on is 512 megabytes, a half a gigabyte and I've chosen to have a paging file size of approximately 2 gigabytes, and that's certainly more than fine. If the paging file weren't big enough, Windows would warn me. 
I could probably take this down to a gigabyte without any significant problem, but I have plenty of space on the drive, so that's fine for now. But if you want to make this larger, or just want to free up space on your hard drive, then just go to Change, and you can put paging files on different drives, or you can choose which drive you want the paging file on, and even have it on multiple drives. I just have it on the C drive, my main drive. Okay, 2 gigabytes, or 2,000 megabytes approximately, and you can do System Managed Size, which does it all for you. You can have no paging file, which is not recommended at all. And I've gone to Custom. And in this example, I've gone with a paging file that's four times the size of my actual physical memory, my RAM. And I've chosen as the initial and the maximum size 2 gigabytes, so that it doesn't constantly change size. So it always remains as 2 gigabytes on my hard drive, used as temporary storage. And actually, here, you see the minimum allowed is just 2 megabytes, with recommended 670 megabytes, and currently allocated, effectively, 2 gigabytes. So the bigger your paging file, within reason, and I would say 4 times the amount of RAM you have is fine, as I have in this example, the more you can run on your computer at the same time. Obviously, things can be somewhat slow if you don't have that much physical memory. And it's constantly swapping programs from memory storage on your hard drive back into physical memory as you swap between different software. But again, more RAM is going to help speed up your computer. But you don't want this to be too small. Perhaps, if you don't have too much space on your hard drive, you'll have to compromise somewhat. But it is good to have a large amount of virtual memory, as it's called, because it can just help your computer run more smoothly, and it can enable you to do more. And four times the size of your RAM, your physical memory, if you have that much space available, is good. And I set it up like this. Custom size, and then the initial size is how big I want the virtual memory. And maximum size is also how big I want virtual memory. Even if all this isn't used, it's allocated on my hard drive for temporary storage for use as Windows runs. So those are some suggestions for setting up virtual memory. And if you do make changes here, when you press OK, you'll probably need to reboot your computer. So do keep that in mind.